welcome to the Changing Times, Changing Worlds, Otherworldly Show. Tonight, our guest is uh, Arkin Stone, or Bill Hegman, who used both names. Um, his passion is studying and developing psychic skills, understanding magic and practices from all over the world. Uh, do uh, check out his uh, book, uh, which is Magic, Mind, Emotion, Body, The Praxis. Magic, No Woo, and How and Why book. A very long topic, but a, I'm only part way through it because it's a, it's a dense, dense book. Uh, tonight, he is going to be talking about leadership and tribalism which a, a pagan perspective because pagans have a problem with leadership and uh, i am i'm hoping he can bring some anthropological perspective <laughs> or maybe sociological or maybe just some pagan perspective and make people think about it because it's it's something that we need to look at we need to drop many of the things that were trained into us when we were small and 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 we weren't thinking about them. And if we think about them, maybe we can be clear about them. So, uh, Bill, Arkenstone, I'm going to take it. Are you going to be taking questions later? Uh, if we have enough time, and I will try to uh, paraphrase. Then I will be quiet and let you take it away. All right. This this is a. I'm going to paraphrase a, a paper that I've written. I, I was thinking it would take about 90 minutes. Um, I, I prepared it for Mystic South. I have not got a confirmation whether or not they want me to present it or not. Um, so I will paraphrase it and try to get to the uh, meat of it uh, and uh, and speak to it. And it's not just our lifetime. I, I want to bring it back to an idea. It's well over 2,000 years of, of training uh, or entrainment. Uh, I want to, first of all, get a bit of semantics managed. When we talk about tribe and tribalism in Western culture, we are thinking of chauvinistic, do dominated, cultish type of behavior. Um, and it's used in a pejorative or a negative manner to um, take a group of people and say that they are uncivilized or otherwise. Um, that is uh, that is because we do not understand what a tribe is, and it's very hard to uh, understand a tribe because even those tribes that still exist have been. Uh, severely damaged, if not uh, having a Western culture going out of its way to destroy them, um, you know, i.e. the Native Americans today, uh, West African, the, even uh, the Sami in the last two centuries up in Scandinavia. So let me uh, start out with, um, I'll start out going through the history of um the organizational imperatives that have shifted and what happens to a culture when that happens. And then continue to bring that up to the day and especially uh, in American culture uh, where as human beings, we become more disenfranchised and more isolated. So we become more and more manipulatable. And those of us who are disenfranchised in a society that's already isolated and doesn't recognize it, uh, makes us susceptible even further. So uh, a little bit about me, I have been an outside individual. I have not been brought into any group, um, pagan, otherwise, you know, culturally I didn't fit in high school. I was two years too young for my peers. Um, uh, I had to lose two thirds of my vocabulary when I went in the Marines. Uh, I didn't want to be in the Marines. I wanted to go into college, but uh, uh, further being disenfranchised, being in IT without an IT degree uh, in a uh, ethnically uh, lopsided uh, um, uh, environment, which I still do not fit. So I constantly have looked 
from the outside in and been treated as an outsider. Whether I looked the part or not, it's a fact. So let the beginning of civilization, let's let's look at it. Um, Samaria, um, there in Eridu, their culture and priestcraft was built around managing canals and agriculture and what have you. Uh, when, when the city of Uruk was established, it is now becoming a uh, culture where it is defining itself by war. Um, the uh, goddess Ishtar, uh, love and war. Um, and there's a, a story about her stealing all the power from the uh, Iritu god Inki. He was a, a primordial god. So they're using cultural propaganda, even at that time, uh, to address why there's a cultural shift and why there's a power shift going into Uruk. And all the other uh, small city states um, are starting to become not villages, not tribes. They're protectorates. They've got governors. They're administrating the resources and the fulfillment of the small empire. And literally very little has changed except uh, name, function, and what have you. The, the Akkadian tribes that came down, they they uh, took over Uruk and the northern cities, but they adopted the administrative styles. So they end up perpetuating uh, an empire class of uh, administrating city-states with governors. They don't care about people. They don't care about the tribes. Uh, and they are using uh, priestcraft and storytelling to justify uh, with propaganda why it is. Um, so that's around 2800 BC, uh, 2500 there, thereabouts. And it follows right up into um, modern day history. Um, the big takeoff point for for uh, Western culture, I want to uh, point out Rome. And in Rome, um, they took some playing cards from the, uh, the Babylonian culture of cinifying, uh, which is a term about making our gods their gods by saying your gods are our gods with a different name. And then you start putting out all these different cultural uh, stories and what have you. Um, but by the time it was Rome, even though they were doing that, it wasn't, it wasn't as important as putting their governors in charge of all these uh, city-states, all these uh, areas of uh, involvement. Um, the Celtic cultures, you had a Druid class that tried to kept, keep the different uh, uh, regions together and work with the nobles and elites and what have you. Um, Versingerix lost it because, first of all, he was a dick. He sacrificed women and children. Um, all, all the other Celtic tribes refused to help him. So Julius Caesar basically had a foothold in Gaul, and and that's his claim to fame. So from there on out, the tribes were controlled. I mean, even even in uh, London, Londinium, uh, uh, and Britain, it wasn't a tribe anymore. It's a protectorate. It's a government. So what what is a tribe? What what are we missing from this? A tribe is a group of uh, labor diversified people. They have a leader that has grown up in the tribe, whose vested interest is the survival of the tribe and the people, and learning each and everybody in the tribe and the different guilds, societies, which are also different religious spiritual things. In other words, there's spiritual diversity to begin with. You have multiple gods, multiple diversities, uh, uh, diverse social groups. The Lakota 
today, you know, they had different religious societies, but you also had clan mothers. So every large family, you you uh, uh, and even a clan, you had trusted leadership that had a continuity, both from family and, and genetics, you know, uh, with mothers and uh, with a uh, society uh, of religious and farming and artisans and what have you. When Rome came, gone. You produce what we tell you to produce, when we tell you to produce it, followed into the feudal ages, there's bands. You grow wheat, sorghum, whatever, you cannot grind it. You are not allowed to. You will be punished. You have to go to the Lord's mill and get not only taxed again, but have a percentage of all your goods, all your farm goods taken so that you can uh, so that you can grind your corn. Uh, I mean, your barley, your your sorghum, your wheat, what have you. Um, if you were uh, raising beet cattle and pigs, your primary diet, oddly enough, is going to be fish. You don't get it. Um, basically, you are told what to produce, when to produce, and how to produce it. Okay. Now, granted, they, they had more time off, uh, but you know, you also had like one in five males that would have to uh, be uh, conscripted for whatever wars they have. Um, so you don't have a tribe anymore. Let's 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 take this up. You know, we got you know fifteen hundred years from Rome wow. Rome um, Rome dealing with this. Okay, let let's let's go to America. And um, one thing to Tocqueville uh, was a uh, uh, French author who observed how American democracy was working well. Um, he was writing this in the 1830s. Basically, you had two um, college-educated people in your village, or three. You may have one or two ministers that actually had uh, a, a legitimate uh, master's degree and and it's, if, uh, and, and, and uh, whatever they learned, and a doctor. Okay, um, they were generally the ones who were elected and sent off to uh, to represent them, and then they would hire and educate somebody else. So these people were vested interest in their local community. Now, not saying that all vid villages were great. Yeah, they they were villages who had their racism. They had their um, uh, uh, religious ideologies, but there weren't that very many. It wasn't until about the 1830s and later that a lot of the evangelical pre-millennialist uh, visions started creating even more uh, uh, Protestant schisms in the Americas. Um, and they weren't as educated and they didn't have to be. And we had an expanding uh, country at the time. So um, you had these ministers running around uh, preaching to one church uh, one, uh, one congregation uh, one week and uh, and won't come back for another month or two so uh, but that but let's look at the Civil War we move into the Civil War and literally you had brothers fighting against brothers you had um, country torn apart but you also have families tearing apart uh, my my family had slaves, and also my great uh, grandfather and his uh, brother. They fought for the Union, um, but they were also the child twelve and thirteenth of of a second marriage, um, and uh, so they didn't see eye to eye. Um, uh, the uh, surviving. Uh, um, eldest uh, wife uh, sold the uh, uh, slaves down south after they were freed. This is really terrible. And, and um, 
sold half a county and took the family and raised them in uh, Brooklyn. Um, so uh, we, we have a, a separation of family. We go on further. Um, now we got corporate America uh, run, running the railroads, uh, using the federal government to uh, squash unions, uh, to shoot shoot people that are trying to organize themselves. I mean, at least medieval ages, you had guilds. But the thing is, they were tolerated and they were a transient community, but it was their own society and they were still working within the, uh, the um, uh, predominantly Catholic traditions and, and a little bit later. Uh, things started to get squirrely with Calvin a afterwards. But anyway, we, we get up into um, uh, the corporations are making tons of money. Um, they are uh, abusing people. They, they, I mean, the one thing that the uh, Civil War did do is create not only freed slaves, but create a whole class of debt slaves, a whole uh, uh, corporate communities where they owned your job, owned your housing, they own the grocery stores. They own how uh, how you get your uh, clothes. Uh, own the doctors, everything, and you owed the company over and over again. And in the rural areas, if you wanted a, a doctor, you would end up giving an acre of land now and then so that you can get health. So you end up having no no property eventually. You know uh, the doctors and lawyers end up becoming rich you know rurally so unless you were you, you went in big had a big farm lots of money you know, you know I, I talk about the last century and how that was destroyed too but um so you have the great depression um the, the economics fall apart because cor corporate greed just couldn't uh, stop consuming itself and everybody else. This literally split split up multi generational families. You don't in this country. You don't have multi generational families living together. You do not have a clan member. You do not have some seated of wisdom of uh, one of your elders that have collectively kept their wits about them and say, you know, this is how we manage our people, uh, our family, how to do that. It got split up four corners of the earth. Um, it's one reason why uh, Europeans look at us um, kind of funny because all, by by um, uh, the, the last, middle of the last century, we're socially inept. We do not have multicultural, uh, multi-generational families. We don't, we don't have an idea of leadership through elders. It's one reason why in the pagan community, it's like I've seen elders dismissed too easy and too fast. But also they have to earn the respect as well. Then there's those who do and, and those who survive. But you can't live by um, charisma by itself. So uh, so we have families uh, dis distur dis destroyed by the Depression. We have World War II. And everybody becomes successful by being regimented into companies, platoons, and squads. And guess what? This is how we're um, managed in corporations. We have this business unit, this business unit, this subunit, this subunit. And our social structures, you know, social organizations, you are brought into one group. You're vetted to the next group where you get a little bit more prestige and power you have to be vetted and um groomed into the next group and on it goes and if you don't play the social game you don't get there and the same thing is in the military you have to suck up to the right individual to get into the one clique and you have to adapt and conform to these cliques of course in the 60s we rebelled against that we were against the, against the corporations, against politics, against uh, 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 disaffect, uh, uh, disaffected uh, parents who are more focused on their um, 
social etiquette and who they know and how they know them and how they why they know them and uh, why can't you play by these rules but we're losing integrity because we don't have multi-generational family we don't have wisdom and we're playing by um games for social structure that has absolutely no interest in you your family or, or any of your other uh conditions so obviously we, especially uh, I'm a late boomer as, as me and, and from the other hippies, no interest in all this hypocrisy, no interest in the fact that when there's a leader, it is somebody foisted on you to control and manage a group. It's about management. It has absolutely nothing to do with leadership. So... Here we have, we have over 2,000 years in the last 200 years in our country, culturally, we have been disenfranchised and isolated. And those of us who are in disenfranchised group, whether you're people of color, LGBTQ, what have you, poor, sick, young, old, um, uh, not socially uh, uh, in involved, um, different uh, uh, different belief systems were disenfranchised because we are not allowed in a group. And our, we also have a reactionary, uh, we want to have a group. We want to be part of a group. And what happens is that our social skills as a teenager is when they grow best. If you are not brought into a group socially, we don't develop those social skills. We don't read the rooms the right way. So we get, get into our small groups and we're already um, codependent, traumatized, victim, uh, have a set of victimology. We're all trying to work on it. So we have a lot of shadow work, a lot of the spiritual work that's great. But at the same time, we're inept. And then the inept sociopaths that didn't make it in the mainframe world come into the pagan community and then they re-victimize us and then groups implode. They explode. They don't survive. And the few that do, you have good caring people, with, generally with uh, uh, social work degrees, uh, psychologists, what have you. They have a bit enough of charisma and they've dedicated themselves for caring, and they've had a small community that supports them. And without a small community that buying into it, it's not going to exist. So, so they, they exist. So what happens with us? We start following the social norms, and we don't know any better. And this is the uncomfortable part that we have to look at. We reflect our programming. Not just from 40 years, not from 200 years, but 2,000 years. The concept of a tribe and building a leadership from the ground up doesn't exist. We have to redo it. Um, and some Native Americans still practice it, but a lot of them destroyed, and they're starting to follow Western methodologies. Uh, West African corporate, uh, you have uh, Ila Ifa. Uh, the different uh, tribal villages and they have the elders, that's great unless they are overcome by Christians or Muslims. And and you have uh, 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 dictations that way. So I painted this as a bleak, sociological, psychological set of conditions. But what we as pagans have available and what we do is about changing who we are. This is number one thing about magic. Number two, we start dealing with how do we change our ego? Or, or, or actually, we're, we're not giving it up like uh, Eastern practices. We evolve it. We do shadow work. We do other things. So it's a matter of becoming aware of it so that we can start building from the ground up. The, the thing is we have to have somebody in a group 
that can identify good leaders and good leadership capabilities and are willing to stand up against those who aren't. And you can't, it's, it's not going to be easy because it takes about 40 years in psychological conditioning for people to create a different cultural ethos. It doesn't happen overnight, but we as individuals all can uh, start work in that direction. But we need a new societal model, one that involves a tribal concept that respects varieties of religions, various uh, 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 faiths, practices, different guilds, diversity of labor, respecting women in every single one of them, having clan mothers or, or clan leaders of families who look at and say, these are our respected elders. They know what's going on. They have been victimized, but they have taught us how not to be victimized, how to look at uh, people who are playing these games and say, how do we deal with them? Are we there to support each other to prevent it? And that's where we start. Um, now, a tribe, the, 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 um, I, I was listening to Mr. Hubbard there from, uh, uh, from a couple of weeks ago, and it was, was kind of like, well, if you haven't uh, participated in a, a community, too bad for you uh, attitude. And that really stuck me because it's, it's, it's still that clickish, we did this. And yes, um, you know, even going back 200 years, um, people who did not fit in into the villages, the first disenfranchised, they got moved into, they moved into cities. And the first thing that we started dealing with is, is having social programs to feed the poor, the indigent, the widows. Well, the Masons uh, uh, did a good part, part of that. But the Depression, no one had the money and neither did churches to actually support all these uh, sa social safety networks because everybody was poor and the social structure is gone. You know, the villages are gone, uh, the multi-generational families are gone, uh, and the churches have become part uh, of that same uh, post-World War II cliquish mentality that uh, works by um, who can control whom and uh, by charisma. And that doesn't have anything to do with uh, caring for a community or the outcast or what have you. So that's, this is something that we have to build um, and make a, a societal model. It, it's we have the ability to create a model that society can work from if we don't get murdered in the process. Um, and, and, yeah. So that's another thing that I, uh, another take that I want to uh, put in our pagan faces is that I do believe in peace, life, love, liberty, and freedom. But I also believe that, um, you had warrior societies in these tribes and they were recognized, but they weren't made leaders except in war. And then they turned it back to the peace chiefs and, and, and the people that ran and, and had the clan mothers, you know, manage an organized society and, uh, and who needs what. And the shaman uh, or the medicine people, they took care of the widows. They took care of the orphans. They got money, you know, it's, 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 they, we call it ties, but um, what my teacher called it was the shaman's portion, the medicine person's portion that, that you, you go bring a hunt and you would give them, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a percentage so that you can feed the people so that they do not become criminalized. Like our Western culture, when people run away from villages, Go to the inner city and still have to try to eke out an existence, but you're criminalized. You're still disenfranchised. Even, even though poor working debt slaves 
will still ostracize you. It's because this is a way of controlling people until we get, because they don't know any better themselves. Okay. Um, some uh, obviously financial hurdles and logistics, trying to get people together to work together um, uh, uh, at a level. Um, one successful uh, venture um, here in the South uh, is called The Farm. It was a um, uh, intentional community and it was uh, originally um, brought by consensus and you know trying to bring people together and farming and off-grid type of stuff. But it was, you still suffered from the emotional charismatic leader who didn't have the skills and they lost uh, like uh, 80% of the community. And it wasn't until the ones that actually had some sort of viable product that, that they could sell on the outside and actually um, took uh, and, and inserted themselves into the leadership. So now that the, the farm actually works, they still have subsistent farming. They make Geiger counters, but they also have a, a group, a, a leadership. Um, one of our pagan celebrities from uh, my day who instituted the concept of consensus. And every consensus group I've ever seen has imploded because there's an emotional leader who succumbed to the same victimology and a sociopathology that is inherent in disenfranchised groups, unless you have somebody who is not codependent, but counterdependent, and they trust them to fight back and call out the abusers so that you can realign the group. But the thing is, the abusers end up having enablers who shoot down the person that is able to help them. And this is where we blow up. The good people, the ones that work out, that can call out the problem makers, get run off. And people don't remember why. All they remember is that that person run off and they were been po gave up, they were tagged with poison by the enablers and the abuser of the group. So no one knows why this all happened. And people don't go to figure it out. And all they do is have this memory of, ooh, this person caused trouble. Well, people who speak the truth generally get into trouble, especially when no one supports the truth anymore or they can't see beyond our ingrained cultural filters that we have been uh, imbued with for past 2,000 years. And if you're a little bit off, you think for yourself, you don't fit, you're going to be pushed to the side. So all, all misfits have to stick together. And um, uh, and start building words like, if you don't trust the leaders because we're, you know, you got some old people there and you don't totally trust the counter dependent mm -hmm. person that fights against the evil sacks of no goodness and people don't want to hear you because uh, I, I'm white male and aggressive and I'm ex Marine, you know, you know, which is all uh, a negative check mark and a, a pagan checklist about should I tr trust you? Well, don't let me vote. <laughs> but do have me say, hey, talk to group Y, talk to group B. Y you and this council are coming to loggerheads. And you're you're why don't you break bread with so-and-so? You and then they come and break bread with you. And you participate in this, in their social or, or uh, uh religious group. You participate in it so that you can see and feel and get a uh that you're part of a community. As soon as you have put food in, in, a, in an equation, people start getting along. It was a trick my brother, and my father did uh, dealing with uh, liberal uh, party politics. They get to the point where they, they, no one is willing to give an inch. They bring out food and then they start giving an inch and they start coming to some sort of um, 
uh, um, an agreement, a compromise. So um, we, we need to introduce that. But the, the idea is having somebody smart enough to say, I'm not going to ratify this because the two of you haven't thought this out and you're, you emotionally bullied this person to accept what you had to say. And I'm going to have to talk with them so that they stand up for themselves because they have a good idea. So you're going to have to listen to it. Nothing gets done until you work it out. And then you find children that have natural leadership capabilities, usually ones that get everybody in the shenanigans. Take them, take them in and have them get introduced. Have them be, care about the people that they get in shenanigans. If, they, if they're a sociopath, you'll weed them out. If they uh, care about people and make sure that everybody gets fed and, 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 and they're w w looking for some way of helping so-and-so, get them to trust different people that have that capability. So you're not doing it by yourself. You are involving the community because that's what a leader does. He does not have all the answers. He has to know who has the answers and who has to sit together to make a better answer. We don't do that. We get people who are have bad answers, who've sucked up to the right people, who have put, are put in charge. And we've been doing that for three and a half thousand years. So um, this is my this is basically my perspective, saying that we have at least the tools, the, the spiritual tools, regardless of the spiritual platform, that we can actually um, organize our brain and actually work not just in magic. And then the one thing I've, I've tried to speak, if, if my spirituality and my religion does not support society, what good is it? I mean, it's great for me, but if it doesn't help the world, um, it's it's what for because we are part of the world if we, if we do uh, anybody any elder that's out there who has one got some sense of spirituality this is not who we are it is our relationship to everything else and it's how we make ma manage that relationship and this is how we bring the the west african concept of ubuntu we are not ourselves. We are the tribe. We don't survive as individuals. I mean, Walt Whitman uh, got it was praised for rugged individualism, and it's been touted in this country for two uh, two hundred years. Great disservice because um, at the time uh, our country was starting to fray apart from uh, sociological and uh, religious reasons and. Um, if you were well off enough, you could afford to go move out into the country and ignore everybody. But 95% of us couldn't. You know, we were working in mills. You know, um, we were you know, working in mines. Uh, we were working um, as hands and farms and those who could afford it. And then we get this whole idea that if we work hard enough and um, some of it, you know, you know, perpetuate the concept of an American dream, I don't know anybody that has. Uh, you know, you, you dig deep enough and it's, they have support or they develop a cult of charisma and get the support one way or the other. Doesn't mean that they've had anybody in their best self best interest. Um, so I, I wanted to have this idea that a out there that uh, we have to rebuild tribes and we have to do it. And the organizational models, uh, it, uh, every group's gonna have to figure that out and whatever, but they gotta realize that we have to build leaders, leaders from within who are best invested in all the groups that make it up. It can't be one group, it can't be one Wicca group, it can't be one heathen group, it cannot be, uh, whatever. Um, Byron Ballard, I, I was listening to her and it was great to hear that they were trying to get a, a larger group together and they realized 
they couldn't worship together. Duh. But they could work together for community events. Okay. So this should give us an inkling that this is where our model has to go, where we have to realize that it's not our faith. It's not our magic. It's not, it's not how we were brought up. It's not our trade. It's not our craft. It's our community because we all have to work together. Um, and uh, the moment that we buy into the disenfranchisement, dis disenfranch <laughs> disenfranchisement <laughs> and the continuous isolation into smaller and smaller groups with their own peculiar psychological vetting process. I mean, granted, if you're going to be part of a group or a society, you got to be vetted and fitted. But you got to realize that group has to serve a function in society. I mean, the Masons, DMLA, uh, you, you, um, uh, Elks, and what. They're charity organizations. They they at least there and they recognize that they are there to serve the poor, the widow, the widow's son, the orphans, the sick, and um, and not all of us are capable of doing that. That's why you have different groups. But you got to recognize that your group is not the only thing. Um, that is where our individual societies, uh, um, uh, Wiccan groups, uh, you know, di different uh, magical societies, you name it, we have to have some sort of moral, common moral um, ethos that involves not us, but everybody. Uh, I hope I made my point. Um, I, if someone wishes, I can send them uh, my paper, and it has links on um, why it is difficult for us to break out of this mold and that's average society. Uh, I could go into uh, a thing called um, uh, state-dependent behavior, and it is the emotional attachments we have to our conditioning. And how, because it allows us to think, remember, based on the emotional patterns and rhythms that we have. And Fox News and the rest are great of creating the emotional paradigm and adding the, the thought that they want you to have and the feeling they have. And they keep up the emotional pattern. And you follow the emotional pattern. You don't use critical thinking to look at the facts. Well, most of us don't do that anyway. Yes. We, it, it, we, we work with cognitive dissonance. We have our own, our biases because our ego gets uncomfortable with anything that makes us feel different than what we're used to. And this is where uh, we go back to fight to collect our wits. It's like when we're sick, we can't remember, we can't function properly. But when we, when we get better, we, we get grumpy, we get a little focused so we can collect our wits. Well, the same thing happens when people make us uncomfortable with what we believe and what we do in a process and it requires some critical thinking that we're not used to doing because we are emotionally charged to fight for our addiction to our behaviors. You know, our a, a, a behavioral addiction is the uh, state dependent behavior is the same as drug addiction. Uh, I I can put, I can um, uh, when this comes up on, on um, the other worldly, I I will put uh, those links in, in as in comments, mm -hmm. so uh, people will have them. Are, uh, are you ready for questions yet? Yes, please. I'm sorry. I I should be sh I should shut up now. <laughs> no, no, what? No, it's it's time to now address specifics. Um, so, are you? Uh, one of the things that I latched onto mentally was Council of Elders, Council of Elder Women. I also noticed your 
yeah, feed people and they're get, they get a lot more open to listening. Uh, um, but how set, setting up these, uh, so what do you think we should get, um, if, if the different religious, if you've got your Druids and your heathens and your Wiccans and your others all, to get a council of all the old ladies from each of those groups to get together? That's, that's what? I, I think you need, need to have uh, the start develop. We're, we're starting to be forced to have multi-generational families. You got kids living with you. I got, my kids are living mm -hmm. with their mom. We have kids living with us. Um, so um, somebody out of that family group needs to be their spokesperson. Someone that has, you know, this concerns us. And they're, you know, as we get older and we're not working, well, we can get our nose up in everybody else's business, except do it for good, not for evil. You know, um, uh, how, how do all these families survive? How do we work together? Star Wolf, did you, you got something? Yeah, I, I must admit from experience, I find when you start doing it, um, when you start making leadership say gender specific, you end up disenfranchising whichever other mm. gender it is. Having had an awful lot of go away and play little boy from people young enough to be my children, um, mm. simply because I'm male and they're female. Yeah, I agree. I mean, so, yeah. leadership does not necessarily uh, mean women, but uh, that's how. It, it works with the Cherokees, you know, mm -hmm. uh, with, with their clans. But uh, I mean, they're 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 family uh, and the clans, but they also have other leaders for the clans as well. So it's 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 warp and woof, okay. Um, but yeah, we we can't. Yeah, that's why each group has to have their own leadership. Doesn't you know? Yeah. Then you get stuck with the well. Our leadership pattern is the best. Everybody should do that. And then that's where they got to get smacked down. Yeah. And, and and the thing is, if it blows up, it, it's just like your pattern works for you. And and, that, and this is this is where um, the you you, you got to have the come to somebody that's willing to take people to task uh, to um, open up. Because when they say this is the way it works and we wanted to work this way, well, then it's questions like, well, how are you actually managing this group? Is this by ham fisting it? Does anybody else have a thought? Uh, uh, you know, you start looking at the health of that group. Does does that, you know, then then it's a question like, well, does that group fit in with the tribe? And then you have to have the whole tribe figure that out. And the thing is, if it, it means like, Hey, we're willing to absorb people, do what's necessary. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not going to pretend that it is, this is easy. I mean, this, not only do we have. Um, uh, got a question. Well, Lily Moonstorm has a qu question. Oh, you don't have to cut it off. I was just saying if there's time at some point. Well, if you have a question, let's let's get to it. You want me to? Okay. Well, were you done? Were you done? I I could, I could keep running off the mouth. Please please ask your question. <laughs> <laughs> well, did Star Wolf get his question answered? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You made a very valid point. Absolutely. Okay. Um. All right. A little bit of background. Um, I started studying magic of different sorts, a whole bunch of different paths. When I was 12, I worked with some elders growing up. I'm 46 now. Um, I just graduated with my bachelor's in psychology. Awesome. And I'm working on my master's in social work. My question is, I'm wondering going forward, you know, provided I get through the social work program, um, um, which is the plan, um, how I can best serve the community as a whole 
as a social worker? Hmm. Excellent question. That that's going to be you know depends on what your environment is. I mean, if, if you're out there supporting pagan and uh, you know alternate you know life groups, um, there are there are social workers down down even down here in Georgia that are, um, make themselves available when they get their shingle out there to actually support uh, the di different disenfranchised groups of people and be, uh, different issues. Uh, as far as a tribal community, if someone is going to build one, you know, we, we need somebody like a counselor, Troy, on, on every bridge. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we have to have somebody that that is not only educated and then dealing with conflict resolution, but also be able to feel and see what's going on with people. But it's also that they're going to have to deal with some people who are um, not like them. I mean, uh, my my attitude and behavior uh, when I'm um, not being intellectual is more Klingon like than anything else. And it's not, you know, my, my, uh, my girl t t tells me I'm a grumpy man half the time. Well, I'm, I'm it's in my voice and you know, it's. It, I get frustrated. I get tired. I get a lot of things. So, um, uh, yes, Guinan, uh, and, and, you know, got to have. <laughs> and, and, yes, we we need to have the Guinans in the group um, that are elders. And, and she was like the oldest one on the ship. She, mm -hmm. um, but she was also not leading and doing. She's there. Gently probing people to look at themselves and then looking at others with, with an open mind. And and the bar, uh, I love Quincy's uh, uh, Quincy's Tavern. Um, uh, she um, she he they I'm not sure. Um, it, it's a, a wonderful uh, little YouTube blog that uh, they have. Um, but yeah, you have to have that. Um, and making yourself available that way. The problem is, it's like any social work or any uh, group leadership thing, you have to watch out from being burnt out if you're the only one. Mm. You gotta have, and you gotta have somebody that, that you gotta have your own support network. Mm -hmm. and I think that's an important that's that. thing that we're, I, I noticed uh, the current, um, is it called uh, Surgeon General? one of his goals for his administration is to deal with the burnout in the medical profession. It's like, oh gosh, yes. Did Guinan was helping the individuals and that helped the whole group. I want to, uh, do you have any ideas? Uh, Feather Stitch has brought up the issues of how do you, how do you reach out to the homebound, the the uh, people who are handicapped. And of course, that's something social workers often have some ability to do. Mm -hmm. this, this, this is where yeah. the, the leg up, and, and, and fortunately, uh, unlike Mr. Hubbard, um, uh, who has, a, you know, it's like, did you participate? Yes or no? Well, that's not the case. The, the thing is, to get the tribe off the ground to get that up to ground you have to establish what you represent and if you're going to represent the homebound because you are going to have homebound uh, mm -hmm. one of the isolation is physical isolation financial isolation or what have you and these are these are modern day technical issues that a modern tribe is going to have to deal with um, at some point uh, you, you're going to have to um, pay somebody in the community to be able to manage resources, excess resources to help people as, as a case comes by. And not, and first of all, we've been disenfranchised and isolated so much. We're, all of us are flipping poor. Okay. Yeah. Working poor. 
I mean, I, I've, it's like, I, I work all these decades, uh, making close and it's all gone, you know, uh, you know, uh, bankruptcy and, uh, X, Y will do it real quick. Mm -hmm. so, um, one medical, pro one medical issue. Yeah. Very... Or one after another. <laughs> yeah. So the, the thing is, it's like, the, the reality is you have to build an organization and have it grow so it can do the outreach and bring people in. And, it, and it's really hard to do that when people aren't agreeable to building um, a community and actually collecting resources on behalf of the community and people that are not part of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, the the masons they make they they have they rotate their masters and they have their pet they have their lodge um charities and then you have the pet charities of the master and uh different groups have you know do their own uh different uh charities the thing is is developing that i mean you got to build that into the model mm -hmm. If yeah, my thing is model, sorry. Uh, you know, at that point, when you build the model and it's working and people see it and you're helping mm -hmm. people, okay, then then you can extend that into um, county, state, federal viewpoint. And, and if the models are there and you're using that model, and people see that. This way of being, and it's not isolated, we're not going to be Amish, we're not going to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, close, our, our, close our doors to the rest of the world, can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the, 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 the Chaldees did the same thing there in Babylon, and they got targeted, okay? Um, so. Uh, That's your contact information, so people. Yeah. This. Mm. So um, let me see if I can uh, put in these links here while we have it. Um, let me just go ahead and get that. Uh, what? Come on, give me it. Okay. One of the things I feel the greatest lack of is because of my financial and disability separation from the community. I feel the lack, I, I desperately want to participate, contribute, and be valued. Always. And the isolation is difficult to overcome. Understood. Here, most of the African yeah. pagans are in the northwest corner of the state, and it's always, I've got to go to them. They never come yeah. down to me. I was amazed that the last Imbolc circle was actually held only 20 minutes from my house, mm. as opposed to an hour and 15 minutes up a back road and into a small town in the northwest mm -hmm. corner of the state. Yeah, one of my problems is that events worth going to are, are usually in places that are difficult to access if you can't walk easily, for instance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the people who just don't seem to get, well, there's only two steps. Uh, still stop mm -hmm. in a wheelchair. Pagan yeah. pride routinely takes place in a park where the paths are uphill, downhill, full of water pits, full of pits from erosion and full of tree roots and things. When, when, uh, when the uh, focal uh, me meeting of a pagan group is a festival, a camp camping event, you're losing your elders. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. That, Why well, I don't do Pensick anymore. I, I'm not up to that much camping anymore. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And so you know you can lose the, the you can lose the, the poor you can lose the old you can use the handicapped but the commitment I think and correct me if I'm wrong Arkenstone but the commitment is to convince the community 
that all our members are valuable, even if you don't see their contribution, even if their contribution was in the past, even if the contribution is not monetary, um, that, that we need to recognize that everyone is valuable and worthy of the community support. Mm -hmm. Everybody should be a respected human being as long as they're uh, act like a human being. I don't know you yes. all very well, but I already know enough to know that you're all incredibly valuable. And if there's anything I can do to organize some sort of like a small event that would be easy for you to come to, um, let me know if there's anything I can do. Because Thank I would love, I would love to attend an event with. Mm with you all i'm not sure where we all are physically but yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, that is an Might issue be. of you yeah. know changing times changing worlds it is looking at being a physical event again which would be really lovely but you know it we want to not eliminate mm -hmm. the people who can't get to an event they'd have to fly to mm -hmm. <laughs> or it would cost a lot of money drive six hours into the catskills for <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to um, stop the recording here. There are a bunch of um, you can save save the record the the chat and get the things. Arkansas going to put links when this gets posted on YouTube. Do tell other people. And I'm not. I'm going to stop the recording. But we are.